Hello, hello, and welcome to At Home with Lucas. So today we're going to be talking about Warsh Espresso Machine. Yes, people, this is a 15 bar espresso machine, which means it should be able to produce a good, steamy, hot, yummy espresso shot. But we won't know that until the very end of this video. So this is actually a company with the slogan, bringing barista home. Yes, people. So the whole idea is to get a barista-like cup of coffee in the home without having to spend that expensive gas money. So in this video, we're going to be doing a hands-on with the box quick unboxing and first impressions on said espresso maker. After that, I'm gonna be putting this bad boy to the at home Lucas test to figure out is this something you should buy or maybe skip altogether. I'm here for you, so you don't have to waste your time buying and returning. All right, let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, let's take a closer look at this bad boy, shall we? So at the top right, you have the name of the company, Warsh. This is Bringing Barista Home. That is what's up, people. There is an image of what's to come in the box. This is a espresso machine. Down here, you can see it says 15 bar pump pressure, steam and froth, perfect temperature, quick start. That is awesome. Take a look at the side over here. All right, a little bit more of what we already saw. Let's go ahead and crack this bad boy open and take a look at the machine. Okay, the first thing you see when you unbox is the user manual. Definitely want to read through all of this so you know how this thing actually functions. The second thing you see is the brewing filter right inside of here with the funnel handle and the metal funnel right chair. Very nice looking, very premium looking. The only thing that's a little bit odd is actually the plastic right here. Just looks a little bit strange. Not as premium as I would have liked, but this is definitely nice down here. It has a nice heft to it, so it's definitely heavy for sure. Very nice, um, that's plastic right there. All right, let's take a look at the creme de la creme. So this thing is pretty heavy. I'm kind of surprised at how heavy it is. It definitely feels like it's made out of solid material. Pretty much everywhere you touch is some form of metal. Um, this is plastic right here for sure. Well, let's just go ahead and take a look at the top. So you have the buttons, the power, the single cup, the double cup, and then the steam arm on the side. Very simple, very straightforward. On this side over here, you have the off and then all the different functions right there, which I'll find out when I read it. This is made out of solid metal. Um, very, very nice, very premium feeling and looking. Everything about this so far is very premium. Even the drip catch, down here is made out of solid metal like they didn't even need to do that but they did really really nice that just shows that if they care about the exterior the interior is going to be that much better right here you have their indicator light which is very cool we saw that on the box so it looks like it's going to glow blue there's the name of the company once again and then here is how you attach that um, filter with the arm onto there this side is just completely clean and then you get around to the back and this is where the water is. You have a very bold and bright max fill line right there. This thing comes out super, super easily. And then you have a min line at the bottom for the minimum amount of water so this thing will require you to not go below that, I would imagine. All right, I've never put this back on a day in my life. Let's go ahead and slap it back on. Wow, it's on super, super easily. You can pour your water in there if you want, or you can take it off and put it into the sink. Back onto this side, take a closer look at that steam arm right there. You got some rubber, so you can move it around. Okay, so I've never put this in a day in my life. I'm just gonna attempt it real quick. Oh, that is butter smooth and it locks into place. Very, very solid. That is a solid feel. Let me go ahead and remove it. Yeah, that is extremely solid. That is professional feeling, um, the way it locks into there. That is really nice. Okay, so first impressions, this thing feels like it's built really solid. I have high hopes for the brewing of this. I think it's gonna brew up a beautiful cup of espresso. 
And uh, yeah, I'm super excited to put this to the test. Let's get into it. Okay, I just read through the instructions and I realized that I totally missed something. This was actually tucked away in the box. This is for the single cup. So the one we saw earlier was a double cup. So that's a single cup right there. And the tamper, the most important part of this whole thing, the scoop and the ability to tamp down your grounds. All right, let's take a closer look at this thing once you plug it in. So you turn it on and you have the four buttons up at the top. They flash until this thing is ready to go. Once they stop flashing, then you are good to go to start brewing. So very simple, very straightforward. Absolutely love this blue right here. It makes it so much like futuristic. This is such a classic stainless steel look. And then you have this blue bar right here. I kind of wish it was more of an indicator or wish it did a little bit, but it doesn't do anything. It just lights up blue telling you that the machine is on and then over time it will shut itself off. So from a distance, you'll be able to look and say, okay, it's on. And then when it shuts off, you'll know immediately because of this giant bar. So that's really cool. So here are the clicky buttons. Once you press them, they'll go blue and then you press it again and you can shut it off. Okay, so this is definitely a machine where you're going to have to precisely grind up your beans to fit this machine. You're going to have to tamp the grounds down to the right amount of pressure in order to get the perfect extraction. So here we go. We have a kind of loosely tamped uh, filter and then we put it on a single pour. So let's go ahead and look at this extraction right here. You can see that it's not terrible, but it's also not a precise extraction. It's a little bit dribbly up at the top and it's just not killing it. It's not something that you're going to be like, yes, this is a great espresso shot. And the crema that does appear, it fades very fast within a matter of seconds. It looks like this right here. And the smell, the taste was not top notch. It wasn't very good. So I switched up my process and I read the instructions, which really helped. You have to read those instructions. And I loaded it up with more grounds. This is a double shot right here. I will no longer be using a single shot in this review. And I tamped it down a little bit more aggressively. So here we go. We're going to push the double shot cup just so we get a little bit more in the espresso cup so we can see what's actually going on and get a better understanding of how this machine actually works. And there you go, you can start to see that rich caramel appearance. Uh, it's starting to look more like a delicious espresso shot, slowly but surely. On this extraction right here, I am killing it. This is probably the best extraction I had done to date. So we hit the double shot button once again. I tamped it down perfectly. Everything went just as I would want. And the extraction, as you can see right here, is phenomenal. There you go. You got thick, beautiful crema appearing on the top. Everything is looking great. This this is the moment when I go, okay, this machine can make a really good espresso shot. You just have to know what you're doing and you have to put in the effort and you have to be willing to try and fail and then try and try again. Yeah, there you go. That is a really, really nice looking espresso shot. Perfect color, perfect crema. Okay, so I'm still continuing to make perfect espresso shots. This time I tamp it down a little bit more aggressively. I really put the weight in here and I also do a double tamp so you can load it up halfway, tamp it down and then load it up again and tamp it down. That's usually for ground coffee that's been pre-ground, but I did it with this just to experiment. And that's kind of what I had been doing the whole time is just trying to experiment to figure out what is going to give me the best espresso shot. And as you're gonna see here, not as good as the third extraction. 
All right, so you got that rich color once again. The crema is a little bit less than the third extraction. And overall, it's just a little bit weaker and that is because I tamped it down too hard. So I put too much pressure down on the uh, grounds, which created a much, much weaker uh, crema. And just a, uh, overall, it just didn't have the taste or the aroma of the third extraction. So still learning at this point, don't tamp it as hard, but tamp it just hard enough. Okay, now I completely retool. This is actually a SF Bay French roast whole bean right here. So I'm trying a completely different bean just to see, do I get more crema? Do I get a better look? All right, those beans broke down really, really nice. Let's go ahead and load this thing up and get ready for another extraction. Of course, we're still experimenting, so I'm kind of putting in grounds and then tamping it down as I go. All right, once again, we're gonna be doing a double shot. That is how the rest of this video is going to go. All right, so that is looking decent. It is definitely dribbling a little bit more than I would like. The stream is not as solid. There it goes. Now it's getting quite solid. The crema is looking decent. It's looking a little bit off though. One side's a little bit thicker than the other. So it's definitely not as good as the previous extraction, that is for sure. That's kind of something that you're gonna learn along the way. You may think you have it figured out, then you adjust it a little bit and it goes way off course and loses that thick crema. Okay, so once again, I'm going to change things up. I'm loading up my grinder once again with some whole bean SF Bay French roast, and I'm going to break these things down a little bit finer. All right, there we go. So that is one tick finer um, of an espresso grind right there. So it could be a little bit too much. I don't know. Once again, I am just experimenting, tinkering around trying to figure this machine out and figure out how to make the best espresso shot. So that's basically what you're gonna spend your time doing. You need to understand you're probably gonna to have to either save up espresso shots and reheat them or be willing to just pour them out because they may not even have good flavor. So here we go, we're gonna load this up really nice. All right, so let's go ahead and test to see how we have improved or how we have not improved on our espresso shot. This is the finer grind, and let's see what we got. <laughs> okay, so the caramel appearance right there is looking really, really nice. I'm liking that a lot. It's a little bit dribbly, and it's getting a little bit weak right there. And the crema is not as thick as I would like, so it's definitely not looking as good. Yeah, you can see that crema is very weak, not strong at all. Yeah, that did not, <laughs> that definitely did not work. The finer grind failed. One thing that you definitely want to do is leave um, a little bit at the top. So you don't want to pack your espresso grounds grinds to the very top. That's actually bad. It can mess with the machine. It can get up into the first filter that's right above it. So you definitely want to leave, I believe it's 0.22 millimeters. I could be wrong. All right, let's go ahead and do another extraction and cross our fingers that we tamped it down with enough pressure and we have the right grind. Dun, 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 So here is something that happened that I just left in. It ran out of water. I figured this would be a good learning experience. So that is what happens when the water runs out. I had no warning. There was no warning at all. There was no light. Nothing came on to say it was running out of water. It just literally sucked itself dry and I had to stop it. Then I filled it up with water and hit the button again. And this is what we end up with a very, very large shot. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to leave this in 
to show that you can run water dry in this machine without knowing that it's going dry because the tank is at the back. Okay, so this is something that I started doing because I figured it would be good for the machine is to run the water into the cup without having the funnel on there. So there we go. I'm running it down. Of course, I wipe it with a paper towel first. Then I run the water through just to get it completely cleaned. And it also heats everything up. So when you go to make your espresso shots, it's going to be uh, that much hotter and that much better. So you should end up with a better extraction. All right, let's make the final extraction of this entire review. This is going to be the last one. So here we go. We have tamped it down to what I believe is the perfect amount of pressure. We have the perfect grind setting now. We know that you don't want to go too fine and you don't want to go too coarse. So we're right there in that sweet spot. Look at that crema, people. That is a powerful amount of crema. It's very thick and it's very solid. The coloring, the caramel coloring, everything is looking beautiful right now. I am very impressed with this espresso shot and I know that I can repeat this. So I've learned what I needed to learn of how to work this machine, how to work my grinder, and I will be applying that knowledge to future espresso extraction. All right, let's get into this sip review, people. We need to put this espresso machine to the test. Um, this is kind of looking like the standard. This might actually be the best extraction that I've gotten from this machine. So it's not the best I've ever seen. And I, I've tried many, many different ways, as you all know. Um, it's just not producing the best looking crema on the top. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. But it is becoming more consistent. And that's good because you need to find a system with these machines and then just stick with it and that way you're not having to reinvent the wheel every time you go and make an espresso shot. Yeah, this crema is holding the longest. All the other crema um, on the top would just disappear in seconds, uh, which is very indicative of a, a kind of um, less quality, I think, espresso machine. But of course it can come down to so many different variables with these machines, uh, from your the ground to the bean, to the extraction, to the tamping, all that stuff that we've already talked about. So enough jibba jab, let's taste this espresso shot and see how well it tastes, people. Ooh, wow, that is very, very complex. Holy bejesus, wow. That is a very good espresso shot right there. It's not too bitter it's not too sweet um it's actually right right in the middle so much flavor the flavor of this french roast is just amazing absolutely amazing you can taste every last little bit of flavor that's in here wow the smoky finish is true to this whole bean mm. yeah wow yeah, one thing I'm, I'm definitely learning is that if you buy an espresso machine, you basically need to be a slight um, scientist, you need to be a slight engineer, you need to have a mind that is willing to tinker and, and adjust and change, and it is definitely something that I'm not looking forward to at 5, 6 in the morning when I wake up. Um, I'm definitely be I've become a little bit more soft because of my Phillips super automatic I just push a couple buttons it grinds the beans and boom I have a really nice espresso shot that actually looks a lot better than this one um, The taste of this though is powerful the taste of the Phillips super automatic is not as good Sometimes I wonder if machines are able to make crema uh, appear to be a little bit more than it really is um, sometimes there's tricks involved with these machines where they're able to make you think that you're getting the best espresso shot in the world. I believe my Philips Super Automatic is only nine bars of pressure, if I'm not mistaken, and this is a 15 bar right here. So this theoretically should be way better and way more powerful. This is um, definitely a beautiful looking espresso shot. The more I look at it, I'm like, yeah, that is a great one. Yeah, the flavor is 
so nice. It's not too harsh, so it's not something you're gonna drink um, black like this and be like, oh, that's terrible. But it is definitely, um, it is definitely strong. <laughs> that is for sure. This is a very, very strong espresso shot. So I'm gonna say that this espresso shot right here is definitely 4.5 out of five stars. Absolutely amazing. Really does produce a great espresso shot, but it's just not the super thick crema that I'm used to from my Nespresso machine. And like I said, my Philips Super Automatic will create a little bit more crema, but this is nonetheless a beautiful cup of coffee, beautiful espresso shot if you know what you're doing and you know how to get it extracted correctly and you follow their instructions. Okay, so I went ahead and frothed up some milk and I really liked how you can fine tune the amount of water that comes out. I also love the fact you can unscrew the bottom little spray tip and clean that out really, really nicely. So that's awesome. Another thing is I would imagine you could possibly get another one of these that had multiple holes in it for a better froth or for a different kind of frothing, but I'm not quite sure on that one. That would be kind of cool if they offered that. But yeah, simple unthread and thread back on and you are good to go. Okay, so I've been using this thing for long enough that I think I have a full comprehensive review. And let's just start off with the build quality. So the build quality is really nice. It's made out of this stainless steel. If it gets dirty, you can just wipe it off very, very clean, very easily. Everything about it is built really solid from the way the funnel goes into here and locks into place to the pressurizing. Everything is just a solid, solid build. So don't, you're not gonna have to worry about the build quality from this thing. It's really nice, super easy to keep sanitary. Of course, it's stainless steel, so it's not gonna pick up germs. Um, the water tank is actually nice. If you have it in a situation like I do, where the handle is all the way back here, it's a little bit annoying, so you may find yourself flipping the the lid and pouring in your water this way. That's what I've been doing instead of pulling the whole thing out. It does come out easily if you grab it like this and pull it straight up. But if you have it in a situation like mine where it's close to the wall, you're gonna be a little bit annoyed. So definitely take note of that. The frother is just a standard frother. There's nothing really special about it besides the fact that you can fine tune your controls, which is really, really nice. So that is a big five stars right there but the end result down here it's basically just a normal frother um, you may find better luck than i did i don't really like the things i have a different frother over here that i use which is more of a standard one where you put your milk in there and that thing just spins and spins and spins and it froths <laughs> to a degree that is professional grade absolutely amazing um, love this light bar right here love the fact that you can see from a pretty far distance what you got going on that it's still on so if you need to turn it off you can do so or if you're ready to make your cup you can also do so but like I said earlier I wish this thing would be more of an indicator or maybe it would you know flash red when the water is going low uh, that would be kind of cool. So the smart features of this uh, are not really there and that would be nice to have in 2022. That would be something really cool. Um, the drip catch is massive. It holds a lot of water. I've dripped a little bit and haven't even filled it up hardly at all. So that is really nice. Um, this thing has come, I've come to love it. It's very nice, it's super solid. The filter in here is very good. Um, the way that this thing allows for the uh, grounds to be held and then extracted is really nice. The way that it fits up into here is phenomenal and how it stays super clean. I just wipe it with a paper towel and it just comes clean immediately. And then of course, like I showed you earlier, I run the water through it and that also will clean it out really nice. Um, one thing you definitely need to take note of is that this is not a Keurig. It's not something you're gonna be able to just put your ground coffee in and make an amazing cup every time. You have to actually put in the work. You have to learn your grinder. You have to have a grinder that's going to be able to handle the type of grind that you want. So this is definitely a, um, passion project if you will it's definitely something that if you buy this you're going to have to learn the espresso way you're gonna to have to learn all 
of the ins and outs of an espresso. Editor Lucas here, so I just wanted to quickly mention that you of course can go to your supermarket, your grocery store, your Starbucks, and you could buy your whole bean and then grind it up to an espresso grind. You can go straight to Starbucks and say, hey, can you give me this bean in an espresso grind? They'll grind it to the precise espresso grind, which you can then take home and put in this machine, making your process a lot easier. So I think, I feel like I was making it um, like this is gonna be the most amount of work possible to get a cup of espresso. But if you do it that way, that's gonna mean you don't need a grinder and you can just basically go to your store and do it that way. But I would definitely recommend getting a home grinder to learn the process because it can be a lot of fun. So machine, you're going to have to learn how to tamp this thing down. So it's, it's a lot of learning and it's definitely something that you can do wrong. <laughs> you can make really, really bad espresso shots if you don't know what you're doing. So if you're trying to buy a machine to become a home barista and you don't want to actually put in any work, you just want to put a pot in or a capsule in, or you just want to like put the ground coffee in really quick and have this amazing Starbucks like cup of coffee, you're going to want to skip this entirely. It's not going to work for you. If you're trying to buy this for a coffee lover out there who is, who is obsessed with coffee, this may not actually work. You may need to figure out, are they someone who actually wants to um, measure out the grounds, measure out the amount of weight they're putting in to each um, shot. It's you know a decent amount of cleaning that you have to do with the filters. So it's definitely something where it's going to be perfect for the person who wants to put in all that work to get an amazing espresso shot or to make an amazing drink. So. As far as an espresso machine goes, this is the second espresso machine I've ever owned in my life. Like I said earlier, I owned a Breville espresso machine. Um, so my ability to review, rate, and judge these machines is very low. And I'm gonna admit that right now. I'm gonna say that there's probably a lot of things I did not cover in this review. There's probably things that I didn't cover correctly, but as this being my first ever espresso machine review on this channel, I would hope that you guys would give me a little bit of leeway and please comment down below of what I missed and what I could do better on future espresso machine reviews because I definitely will be reviewing more espresso machines coming up on this channel for sure because this is something I actually really love. I enjoyed the process of breaking this thing down and trying to review it and I enjoyed what this machine gave out. So enough of that. Let's talk about a star rating. Let's give this thing a star rating. So for the price and for what it actually gives you in the cup, I'm going to give this thing a solid 4.3 star rating. I'm going to say that it does not produce a five star espresso shot. It does not uh, function as a five star machine, but it is definitely, definitely close. You may buy this thing and go, no, it is a five star. I'm absolutely blown away. And that's amazing. For me personally, I'm not going to give this thing that five star at home with Lucas stamp of approval, but I am going to say that it is a phenomenal machine and there's not a lot to hate about it. The end result in the cup is where it's lacking just a little bit and I wish it had just a little bit more oomph. And I can imagine in the future if I review another worse espresso machine, I may find that that is the five star machine. I don't know. But as of right now, solid star rating, highly, highly, highly recommended to anyone out there that knows what they're buying and knows what they're looking at. Definitely worth your time, worth your money if you are in that camp. Bye it. All right, there you go. That's the worst espresso maker. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely click and clack that like button. And if you want to join the Adam Lucas family and you want to be a part of this crew, hit that subscribe button. Every time I get a subscriber, I get a boost to make more and more videos. It's because of you guys, I surpassed 4K. Yes, people, on my way to 5K, but I need your help. Yes, you right there. Tell your friends, tell your family. If this guy's on YouTube, they should go subscribe and watch my channel. But as always, I thank you for watching each and every one of my videos, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.